Coming up on tonight's UAP News Show. Peru's Ministry of Culture storms the live Nazca Mummy <laughs> press conference. Is the UFO stigma too much? UFO Disclosure Act 2.0 is in the hands of the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee. And then there were two major earthquakes within the last week. NASA's astronaut application. And a new season of Skinwalker Ranch. Hey there, beautiful souls. It's your girl, Allie. We're back at it again for another episode of UAP Society's weekly UAP and UFO news show. We've combed through this past week's most exciting, intriguing, and informative happenings, and I'm stoked to get started. So without further ado, Justin, say hey. Greetings, cosmic enthusiasts. It's Justin here, and welcome to the UAP Society's UAP UFO News Show. Your ticket to an interstellar adventure like no other. Whether you're a believer or a skeptic, get ready for a cosmic roller coaster ride through the latest updates from the far reaches of the galaxy. You're in for a treat as we bring you the latest and greatest UAP and UFO news. So find your seats, strap in, and get ready to go on a galactic roller coaster ride with us. And then please consider subscribing if you like this content. While you're at it, drop us a like. We would greatly appreciate it. Up first, Peru's Ministry of Culture storms the live Nazca Mummy press conference. <laughs> wow. It was it was something to see. On Thursday, April 4th, 2024, a press conference featuring the newest Nazca mummies of alleged alien bodies was held at the Sheraton <laughs> Hotel in Lima, Peru. This event, which was being live streamed on YouTube, was quite literally taken over by Peru's Ministry of Culture in an effort to confiscate the mummified bodies, which weren't even there. It was a truly remarkable event to witness in real time. So in case you missed it, we're going to take a look at it next. To give some pretext to what you're about to see, first is a clip of Patrick from Vetted doing his own live stream covering the press conference's live stream, where we'll get to see how the online community responded to the chaos. Yeah. Then we'll hear from someone that was there when this all went down. And finally, we will hear from Jaime Musan himself and see the video of the new alleged alien mummy that they're calling Montserrat. Let's watch that now. Okay. I think that right now, personnel from the Ministry I'm surprised. of Culture and the Public Ministry are arriving here. Personnel from the Ministry of Culture and the Public Ministry is arriving here. This is a historical moment for the Peruvian society. We I think you're not sure, Ed. A uh, great question. Uh, truly important to we have the important visit right now of authorities they're coming into this conference we would please come to the podium we would like to know what you are uh, what do you need excuse us for our interruption we are being we are producing a preventive and opined with the ministry of culture regarding the cultural patrimony and uh, regarding the exhibition of the mummies that have been uh, shown in public networks. You know that we must protect the public patrimony. And we would like to know who is the person responsible of this responsible and who's taking custody of this alleged national patrimony right now. She did slick an Odeon. She just took that mic. <laughs> I will start a formal procedure. The bodies will be presented in the video, Joyce Mantilla says. We cannot, we cannot continue accompanying you, says the representative of the ministry and public ministry. What is happening right now? That's what I was wondering too when I was watching this live. <laughs> a custody according to our rules and norms and laws. Either. And I will never give up the mic. The voice, the microphone to the representative who is right here. Watch this. This part. is crazy. I don't know what's happening, y'all. Yes, right now we want to nope. speak with the person Bro, in charge. What is happening right what now? Is your Snatched. name and your. <laughs> it's like a Telenova, <laughs> man. I'm, I'm an so attorney of the Ministry of Culture. We have already informed you that through the uh, that allegedly there's a that there's an alleged um national patrimony in, in this and joyce mantilla says this you is have crazy not look at everyone filming oh my God. willing to search these bodies you can what the hell can, guys uh write your official uh, oh, acta or uh, official letter demand official news 
official notification. Bro, they are. If you want, you can stay with us to see if, 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 if you can <clears throat> come to understand what we are dealing with here. Dino, come on, man. That's not what's happening. Please take a seat. Calm down. And observe and watch these extraordinary specimens that we have in Peru. The stage, guys, what do you think? Like they have a different agenda, but they should really make an exception here. Dude, this is it's just crazy. Event. Um, fortunate. I'm fortunate to know that finally, after so many years, the Ministry of Culture is doing what it was supposed to do. Finally, they are we don't know, Scott. taking care of the patrimony. It is very good to know that they are finally preoccupied with the patrimony. There are many places that are abandoned and in ruins. All I was paying Peru. attention to the chat. All of a sudden, I don't, I don't even know what's going on. Site <laughs> fell. It happens so fast. And, right? and they are, I can't even keep up with these comments. Why, they're preoccupied with the tridactyl bodies from Nazca. Why haven't they gone to the University of Ica and add their scientists to the scientists over there and to and do the research together? So... Why we will I... continue. I don't know, Dave. I'm, I'm also uh, confused. Really allowing the, <laughs> the Ministry of Culture right now to Why am I confused? I agree. do their diligence, uh, legal diligence. Got it. Because Rodriguez okay. is saying that we will wait for a few minutes so that the public ministry and the Ministry of Culture uh, people continue with their diligence. And after that, we will continue with our conference. I, I guess we're taking we a little break. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jaime Maussan, in order to continue with this press international press conference and presentation of the tridactyl bodies of Nazca and Valpa. Breaking news, we're here at the Nazca Mummies press conference here at the Sheraton Hotel in Lima. You're in the middle of Joas Montilla's speech. A group that appears to be from the Ministry of Culture has came in and literally grabbed the microphone from Joas Montilla and just started taking over. Uh, there appears to be a great uh, conflict going on right now. I'm a little confused as to what's happening, but it's chaos here at the Sheraton Hotel in Lima. Real quick, can you update our English audience real quick on what's going on? Just a real quick talk. Oh, you can see how the government of Peru is against this finding. If they say that these bodies are fakes, why are they here? Are they real? What do they want to stop? If this is a finding for humanity, what is happening here? <laughs> they never wanted to investigate this. They said from the beginning that they were hoaxes, and now they are very valuable. They are here to confiscate them. Why? Why? Good you question. Understand? I understand. That's the way it is. Do you That's think what we had to confront in this country for seven years. So right now, they're here to confiscate the actual bodies that are here yes, on the property right now? Yes, but they right are now. not here. Okay. They are not here. We were not so stupid to bring them here. Did you expect this to happen today? Did you have a feeling they might we, show up? We thought that would be possible. Could be possible. We, we didn't think that this was going to happen. I think I didn't think they were so stupid to do this. Because now the attention is in this investigation. Right. What they wanted to do is now going to be the opposite. Now the people is going to want mm -hmm. to know why is so much behind yeah. this. Why the police is here. He's got a point. You know, if this is not important, why are they here? Okay. Their now we're going to see the mummy. And now we will present you a new being that we only received a few days ago. Also a tridactyl being very similar to Montserrat. This would be the type of being of an adult young woman of perhaps between 16 and 20 years of age with an extraordinary surprise. And this is the definitive proof. This female was pregnant. How can one can make a trick of, of something like this? Dr. Salse will try to demonstrate, but it's very difficult that the being in her interior, interior it's a tridactyl. These are its fingers. These are not anomalies because the fingers seem to be functional. That looks like a foot to me. Yeah. <clears throat> this is the size of the discovery. This is the great treasure of Peru. The great treasure of Peru. A treasure that perhaps uh, new interests want to occult, hide, 
Why do they want to hide this? Why, what do they fear? Why not allow the research to go on? We, are, we, are, we will request, we will be able to cons reconcile this millionaire demand lawsuit on Peru. And one of our requests will be to allow us to take these bodies to other countries in order to perform uh, research. So that was a lot. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> there's for a sure. lot to go over there. Um, where do you want to start? <clears throat> um, <laughs> I mean, if there was nothing to it, why would they interrupt that news conference? You know, right now, I don't know what the role of the Ministry of Culture is exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I've not really heard of that before, so I don't know. Mm. Maybe I should have looked it up. But anyway, um, I just do think that there's a point to it that why would they show up, you know, like ready to snatch the mic and take the thing over and confiscate the bodies that they didn't even have there if they were a hoax? Why would they do that? It's like if there's yeah. no there there, then what are you doing all that for? Right. Are you doing too much? Right. I mean, you know, we're we're <clears throat> not trying to speak to the validity of the mummies, you know, we're just kind of reporting what happened yeah um i don't I know no if they're real or not movies. yeah i have yeah. no idea <laughs> uh jaime musani you know definitely believes that they're real and thinks they're real um yep. you know they need to be studied just like yeah. everything else you know we need to allow them uh to have scientists legitimate credentialed scientists go and study these bodies. And that was the last thing that Jaime said before that clip cut off, is that mm -hmm. he wants other scientists from other countries to study this, to bring validity to it. He doesn't yeah. want this to be like a laughing stock of the century. I mean, right. that whole scene was like a telenova, but that's a whole different <laughs> scenario. Um, like Justin <clears throat> said, we're not here to say whether the mummies are real or not. I don't mm -hmm. have anything to go off of to like have an opinion about it, really. So um, until some scientists do come forward with some data, either some DNA or some, I, I don't know anything um i would love to see dr gary nolan get his hands on those things yeah and hear, I would too. And hear his mm -hmm. uh evaluation but yeah um you know it's it's a super interesting topic mm -hmm. you know it's i mean it's comical yeah <laughs> and it's least. ongoing still right? like there's still like um, this is just the first thing yeah, about it so you know, uh i don't know it's <laughs> It's one of those things that's like, can't make this up. I know, I know. You literally and cannot make this shit up. You I, know, know? I know, and we'll keep you guys updated if stuff does come out about it, so stay tuned. Yeah. Is the UFO stigma too much? This week, Theories of Everything host Kurt Jamungle announced on Twitter his sabbatical from UAP research and coverage, as shown here. So is the stigma surrounding the UAP phenomena getting to be too much? To answer this question, let's hear from UAP Society's Captain Chris Lado, where he answers the exact question in this next clip. I want to talk about the state of the UAP community. It seems like we've been hit by a full gut punch, and there's been a noted departure of a few key podcasters. I want to go through those departures and talk about my own recent experience and how I'm doing. The question is, has there been any marked change in the phenomena? Have we been proven false? Have all the claims been made false? Is it really down for the count? Or is the UAP community going to stand back up and continue fighting? Okay, first person oh, yeah. I want to highlight stepping back is Kurt Jaimungle from Theories of Everything podcast. This is a podcast I consider Kurt uh, a friend. I think he's a great podcaster. Let's hear what Kurt has to say, why he's stepping back. This is from X. My last interview with a UFO bigwig was eight months ago. And... In part, the reason for the lack of frequency with these with this topic is because I've I've backed away. I've backed away. Why? Because I'm I'm disappointed and I'm dismayed. Hmm. So the reason is that there's always the promise of some tangible governmental or scientifically sanctioned data that's just around the corner. There was the rumor of 40 new whistleblowers coming forward. It never panned out. But even if it was 140, then it's the next question is so what? Because there's only so much that that talking can do. And I see that I see acrimony developing it in the in the people who are involved in the scene. So Kurt hadn't interviewed a, a UFO bigwig, as he calls him, for eight months, and then he interviewed Richard Dolan and had 150,000 views in just a few days. So again, another hit video I would consider on his channel. And then he released this that he's actually disappointed and dismayed, and he'd be stepping back from the topic 
again, from a UFO topic. Why? Because it, it is such a difficult topic. And it is. I mean, if you look at the CIA has literally been involved in this topic for, for decades. And you're talking about changing the mainstream mentality, going against the grain is just very, very difficult. And I can attest to that, that, that it is difficult to be in this, in this field. Why again? Because you're going against the mainstream narrative. And for decades, multiple decades, 80 years, the stigma has been very, very strong. And in later videos, I'll show you why the stigma is still strong in other forms of science. And that's why I really look into all these other big bang theories to go against the mainstream narrative that dark matter is real, that dark energy is real, and that the big bang is, is a real event. And I, I'll have a video releasing later showing that this is actually not the case. There is tons of evidence, very clear evidence against the big bang. And there's very little evidence for the big bang and dark matter. And yet in the mainstream science, this isn't changing, it's still the same. So unfortunately, Kurt says he'll be stepping back. His videos are very popular and it's unfortunate because he does do great interviews. Salvatore Pais was another uh, noted interview. He's also interviewed Greer as well. So hopefully we'll see him back again as he's rested up and we get some more data because has, has anything really changed? I'll show a clip later on in this video that no, the UFO topic is still moving ahead in the background. It's still moving ahead. Mm -hmm. I even heard from Michael Herrera. He said he's working behind the scenes again with the insiders and hopefully this summer we'll get him back on the show with some new information. So it's going, okay? It's just a very, <laughs> very difficult topic. Let's go to the second person who stepped away. Okay, this is Merge Podcast with Ryan Graves. And unfortunately, this is his last interview on the Merge Podcast was five months ago. And since then, he's only released one video, which is really the Merge Podcast 2023 year in review. So Merge Podcast hasn't released an interview in five months, unfortunately. And this is the 2023 podcast year in review. I can only hope, I haven't talked to Ryan Graves, I can only hope that he's actually just taking a break for a few months. But based on not releasing an, in, uh, an interview in five months, I'd say he's definitely taking a step back, the same as mm -hmm. Kurt Jaimungle. But Ryan Graves is still working behind <coughs> the scenes yeah, for he is. Americans for Safe Aerospace. I released a video uh, two weeks ago on UAPs in the European Union Parliament, and Ryan Graves actually called in and gave a very good uh, remarks on UAPs and what they're doing in the background. He's also inter introduced a bill into Congress in January, Americans for Safe Aerospace, I believe it's called. Yeah. And that will actually allow pilots to have a, an, some sort of avenue to report UAPs. Again, the stigma is just so huge. Mm -hmm. And I'll show, my next video will actually show that the stigma is huge just in normal science. It's just normal science. If you say the Big Bang doesn't exist, they will not let you publish that in a paper. You cannot actually publish in any sort of mainstream articles, any sort of, hey, the Big Bang did not exist. Okay, so if you want to say, hey, we're trying to do science experiments to figure out if aliens exist, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to be even worse. I mean, if you can't even say the Big Bang didn't exist, how can you say that aliens exist and could possibly be here, that we could have an extraterrestrial presence actually here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be very, very difficult. Yep. But behind the scenes, it's still going on. There's an amazing shot of Ryan at the Congress, and I was there July 26th. If you think about it, Government moves slowly. It moves very slowly. And bureaucracy, you're fighting a giant bureaucracy. They know how to slow things down. Mm -hmm. The mics. So Mike Turner and a few congressional leaders were able to shut down the actual bill, the Disclosure Act that was coming from Charles Schumer last year. So it just moves slowly. It's a slow-moving topic. It's been 80 years. So we're not just going to punch through with a few podcasts and just make this work. So they're taking a step back. Ryan Graves and Kurt Jaimungo, but hopefully they'll be back in the game. Yeah, hopefully we'll see them back. Um, I know that they'll definitely be missed in the community. Um, referring to um, Kurt, uh, I think he's taken a break before and come back, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, so I this seem is, to remember he did that. Yeah. yeah, I don't think this is the first time for him. Um, and as far as Ryan Graves, like Kurt, uh, excuse me, like Chris said, uh, he is doing a lot of behind the scenes kind of stuff. Like he's mm -hmm. got that new thing going where pilots can report. And he was at the hearings. Also, he was at the Mexican hearings where they had that whole display of the three boxes with the mummies in them. Yeah, that's the one that he got really mad at. Yeah, he was <laughs> not happy about no. that whole shenanigan party that they threw. But you know what? I mean... <clears throat> 
he was there to represent. And then he also, like Chris said again, uh, represented at the European Union UAP meeting. So mm -hmm. he is doing stuff. Um, and um, we're here. If you guys need some UAP <laughs> or UFO news, you know, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's a super important topic, I, I think. And, you know, um, <clears throat> I'm super excited for the future, obviously. Um, and... You know, we just got to stick together and keep pushing forward. Otherwise, we're mm -hmm. not going to get, you know, disclosure. Right. You know? And uh, the government does move super slow. slow, slow, slow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I truly think that there still are, you know, 40 something whistleblowers in the pipeline. Hopefully. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, they haven't come forward just yet. But right. You know, still wait. There's a lot yeah, of things takes... that I feel like we're still waiting on. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, like like Kurt said, you know, yeah, they always seem to there always seems to be this uh you know goalpost getting moved mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like they keep moving the goalpost on us you know yeah i mean, I mean things aren't so gonna really true, happen but... overnight though but i mean i can see how if you've been in this game for a while it mm -hmm. can get really tiresome um yeah. i'm sure there's a lot of feelings and emotions of defeat and frustration and anger and you know like those kind of things <laughs> um so i mean i get it and you know what in, in reference to if people need a break, they should be able to take a break. You know, we mentioned yeah. mental health on the show uh, a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago. Chris just yep. mentioned his own uh, recent mental health journey. And we just think it's really important that you, like, respect yourself, love yourself. And if you feel right. like something is overwhelming you, take a step back, yep. recollect yourself, take a breather. Everybody can have their own moment. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And come back when you're ready. Right. Yeah. You know, mental health is super important. And <clears throat> definitely, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it really helps to stay grounded, you know, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> like, you know, like Chris said, everybody goes through their own journey, you sure. know, sometimes you struggle, you know, but the key thing is, you know, finding your way back. Right. right. Well, I just I just feel the need to bring up Cardi B's lyrics right now where she's like, I got knocked down nine times, but I get up 10. Mm. It's like, that's what life is about. You know, life's always going to throw things at you. Right. And if it tosses lemons at you, you can choose to be sour about it or you could choose to make some lemonade or some margaritas. You know what I mean? It's like you got to right. deal with the cards that life gives you. So. So we also mentioned a couple of shows ago, I can't remember how many, that Sean Cahill, retired U.S. Navy, um, was joined as an advocate for a group called Unhidden, which is a mental health advocacy group. Mm -hmm. And since then, there have been two more UFO researchers that have joined ooh, ooh. into this. First one is Alex Dietrich. Okay. Okay. So tell everybody who she is. Uh, she was the uh, uh, wingman during the 2004 Nimitz uh, Tic Tac encounter. Wing with Commander woman. David Fraber. <laughs> and the other one is Tim Galdet. You guys all know him. Uh, another U.S. Navy guy retired. Mm -hmm. um, he was just in the recent Darcy Weir film called Transmediums that we also covered. Mm -hmm. So uh, the mental health conversation is becoming more and more prevalent lately. And I feel like it should. I feel like it should. It shouldn't be a taboo thing. No, it definitely should not be taboo. Um, I feel like it's important to uh, stay grounded. Mm -hmm. And if you ever do lose your way, you know, um, Listen to your family members, you know, listen to your loved ones and don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, yep. everybody needs help every now and again. Right. You know, and especially people in the UFO community, you know, people who, you know, look into this topic, you know. This is I a mean, really is, heavy topic. I <laughs> mean, is. it is, you know, we've we've been in the game for a minute now, but there are mm -hmm. people that have been in the game since literally before I was born. Yeah. Like, if you think about, like, the George Knapps and the Linda Moulton Howes yeah. and, you know, all those old school cats, yeah. like, they've been doing this shit for longer than I've literally been incarnated in this vessel <laughs> on planet Earth in the present moment. So yeah. it's like, you know, <laughs> I'm still glad that people like them are still producing stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we got uh, Linda Moulton Howes doing her Earth Files videos once a week. Yeah. We got George Knapp hooking up with Jeremy Corbell doing the weaponized thing. So, yeah. Um, but getting back on track with what we were talking about with the story, because we kind of veered off on a couple of tangents there. Yeah. Um, so disclosure is still happening. OK, it's a slow process. But we got people like Danny Sheehan, who's <laughs> keeping that ball rolling down the field. Let's hear yeah. from him next. So UFO Disclosure Act 2.0 is in the hands of the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee. According to The Wan on Twitter, Danny Sheehan, in a new interview with Whitley Schrieber from Dreamland, that's the name of his YouTube channel, posted about an hour ago, quote, there is now prepared and in the hands of the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee, a UFO Disclosure Act 2.0 version, which is substantially the same as the original bill, end quote. And the biggest point of contention, that eminent domain language, once again. Yeah. 
always the eminent domain. <laughs> Let's take a look at that embedded video and hear it from Danny himself. And so there is now uh, prepared in, in the hands of the United States Senate Intelligence Committee, a, uh, a UFO Disclosure Act 2.0 version, okay? Which is substantially the same as the original bill. <laughs> They've made some additional provisions of pointing out, for example, in the eminent domain portion of the bill that was to grant the power of eminent domain to that independent nine person board of review to extract the information from the agencies and extract the information from the private aerospace industries. And very importantly, to, to lay claim to any of the technology, any of the crafts that have been turned over to any of the private aerospace corporations <clears throat> that under the exercise of eminent domain, the United States government would reclaim its authority to own that property. Uh, now, that has been a big sticking point. It certainly has. The aerospace industry was up in arms, basically, over that. Uh, and what, but, but you know, the, they're, they're not entitled to, to maintain uh, private property any more than any other citizen would be. You know, and the Fifth, the, the Fifth Amendment, the United States Constitution, has the eminent domain provision in it, saying specifically that the United States government, as constituted under our Constitution, has the authority to exercise eminent domain over particular property as long as they uh, as long as they're willing to pay a reasonable fair market value for whatever the property is that they seize and it has to be seized for a, pub a bona fide public interest okay so it'd be interesting to find out how they dis determine a fair market value for that particular property well the, the, it would be uh, basically the, there's a doctrine in the law called quantum merit which is that you know, it's worth whatever the service is that they provided. You know, if, if that aerospace industry provided a certain number of man hours or person hours devoted to trying to understand the technology, they could be paid for that at a fair market rate, you know, of what, what it would cost to have that kind of research done. Yeah. But they, they don't, they're not entitled to own property rights to the title, of to, to intellectual property rights to the property. That's the point of the debate right now. They, they want to have intellectual property rights over the technology. And that would give them the right to continue getting a portion of the value of that technology into the future for any open-ended amount of time. If that technology was ever used by anyone uh, in the private sector or in the pub public sector even, th they would be getting a share of whatever the, the market value was of that, that invention. That, that I don't agree with. Uh, I don't believe that they have to be given intellectual property rights to something. That, that's like saying that if the United States government engages, uh, say, you know, uh, 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 say, say, you know, Boeing company to say, look, here's a craft. Tell us how this how this craft works. How does the propulsion system work? You know, and that you you apply your time, you devote some of your scientists' time to this, and then you tell us what what the technology is and how it works. Fine. And then we'll pay you for that service, but not give you the technology. <laughs> you yeah, you don't right. all of a sudden come to own the technology just because you've been asked to do some research on it. You know, uh, so this one, that that language is a sticking point for, you know, the government contractors, mm -hmm. right? It really, and really is. I think they will always fight this bill with everything they have as long as that language is still in the bill, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know, I'm kind of torn on this one because I can see their point of view, right? If they, if you do have a technology, you want to maintain it and you want to, you know, keep it for yourself. Right. Um, but then again, I also see our point of view, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, this technology just shouldn't be for one corporation, you know, if they indeed have a, a crash, you know, retrieval. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll be honest, I think there should be some kind of language in the bill that that says if you've had a certain, um, let's say, craft for X amount of years and you haven't done anything with it or you haven't made any progress on it, you know, it should then be turned back over, you know, or oh. or given to other people, you know, that might be able to make a breakthrough. OK, you know, Interesting. why can't that be in the in the bill? You I know? think that 
no matter what, they're not going to want to give up their little secret. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like if the government is providing craft to these companies for them to then reverse engineer it and understand the technology for them to then pass that information along back to the government so that they could use that information to make our stuff better. Mm -hmm. You know, apparently that's a really big secret that they don't want to open the lid on, you know, but yeah. I feel like I'm really grateful for people like Danny Sheehan. That's trying really hard to keep this rolling for people like, uh, you know, representative Eric Burleson, mm -hmm. who recently uh, introduced some new bill. I can't remember what the name of it is right now, but he, I know that he's still trying to, kick this can down the road, as good old Tim Burchett says. <laughs> um, so there are still people hardcore still interested in this topic and going to bring you new things as they come out and going to try to just keep this thing going. All right, so up next, we have two major earthquakes in one week. Mm -hmm. And according to Insider Paper on Twitter, on Wednesday, the Statue of Liberty was struck by lightning, and today it was shaken by an earthquake. What? Yeah, <laughs> That's all what... within the same week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and there's some coverage of that quake thanks to a camera at the top of Lady Liberty. Uh, let's check it out now. All righty. Yep, you can definitely see the shaking. Rumble, rumble, rumble. <laughs> Man. I literally lived in New York half of my life and never, ever experienced an earthquake while I was there. I'm just going to throw that out there. Never. I experienced a tornado once when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and that was wild, seeing, like, a whole entire tree, like, roots and all, flying past the window behind the TV that I was watching Sesame Street on. But, yeah, that's that's scary. Yeah. My mom was like, Allison, get away from the window. I'm oh just sitting God. there watching Sesame Street like. Dee, dee, dee. <laughs> but anyways, why are we covering an earthquake on a UFO show, you might ask? Well, yeah, here's why. why. <laughs> Former Ministry of Defense and UFO enthusiast Nick Pope tweeted, Elizabeth and I are in New Jersey ahead of tonight's Ancient Aliens live show at the State Theater, and we've just had an earthquake. I could, like, hear him saying that yeah, in his accent. Yeah, me too, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you read that right. An earthquake here in New Jersey. Mm. And in addition to that, Tiny Kloss on X said, we're about 10 miles from the epicenter. Never experienced anything like that. So that was a 4.8 magnitude quake that was felt all throughout New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And then two days before that, there was a 7.5 yeah. magnitude earthquake that hit Taiwan. Yeah. They had flood warnings and everything. Oh, like, yeah, tsunami warnings, mm -hmm. right, went out. A lot of Earth activities happening lately. Yeah. All last week, we had <laughs> two earthquakes. We had a total solar eclipse, which I hope you guys got a chance yeah. to celebrate. We were outside with the scope, <laughs> taking pictures while also watching it live on the yep. phone. NASA's coverage of that while also playing Total Eclipse of the Heart on the TV. <laughs> um, and, and if you go to Discord, <laughs> you can see some of my pictures that I was able to, to grab. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, it was fun. We had a good time. We yep. made it like a whole thing. Um, and we also know some of our friends and fellow mods that traveled across state lines lines to go witness this event with their entire family kid and yep. all so like <laughs> this was a pretty big deal yeah and uh i am definitely gonna make plans to go see the next one in person okay yeah because of everybody that was <laughs> 2044 here everybody we come. that was in <laughs> amazement of looking at the uh corona of the sun you know i mean it, it was fun just hearing everybody's excitement makes me want to go <laughs> yeah yeah the the one well i don't want to say the one because there was like a bunch of different reporters but mm -hmm. she was literally like crying she was like i'm so excited <laughs> yeah and she just like couldn't help herself mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah it was pretty amazing i'm also waiting to hear back and see what nasa finds out from those three rockets that they launched before during oh, yeah. and after the eclipse we've yet to hear about that mm -hmm. but speaking of nasa let's roll into our next story nasa's astronaut application have you ever dreamt of going to space, of flying in a rocket ship, of being an American astronaut? Well, if so, the next story is for you. Uh, a tweet from NASA's Artemis says, Are you looking for a career change? Do you want to see Earth and our universe from a new perspective? NASA is looking for our next class of NASA astronauts who will explore our moon and beyond. Apply now and shoot your shot to be an astronaut. <laughs> that rhymes. <laughs> right? So, yeah, that's cute. Um, if you've ever wanted to be an astronaut, I mean, here you go. Shoot your shot. Now's your chance. Um, mm -hmm. They're looking for people. I don't know what the qualifications are, but hey, yeah. go to NASA.gov and check it out right, for yourself. Right. All right. So normally there are hundreds of people that apply okay. every year to become a NASA astronaut. right? Really? And yeah. out of all those hundreds, they only pick one? 
Oh, no, 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 no. They, they pick a class of 20 to 30 people. Oh, nice. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, it's quite literally... I. And they the keep all of the them. Best. They're not like weeding them out like in a reality TV show game where they listen no, like every no. once week. You're it's selected, like two less people. <laughs> once you're selected, you're okay. an astronaut. You go through training and everything, and then after you get qualified to be an astronaut, then you get selected to uh, to go fly. You know, you get selected for certain missions. Oh, cool! Right, mm -hmm. sounds like fun. Yeah, uh, but you know, it's a pretty um, competitive recruitment, I would say. Okay. You know? Yeah, okay. there's a lot of people that apply that don't make it, but. Um, you know, if you're one of those people out there that is absolutely motivated to be an astronaut, you know, you can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you just have to set your mind to it and go for it. Links to this tweet will be in the description box below. So if you're interested in applying and becoming NASA's next astronaut, make sure to check that out. And good luck if you do apply. <laughs> <laughs> And last but not least, a new season of Skinwalker Ranch. A tweet from owner and operator of Skinwalker Ranch, Brandon Fugel, said, It's official. New season launches April 23rd, documenting our investigation at Skinwalker Ranch. With an army of credentialed third-party experts and more resources than ever dedicated to finding the answers, we are excited to unveil our recent activity and findings. I am so excited. I knew <laughs> you would be. And looking at History.com, they say the fifth season of the History Channel's popular series, The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch, tracks the boldest efforts yet of ranch owner Brandon Fugel and his team led by principal investigator Eric Bard and astrophysicist Dr. Travis Taylor to reveal the ultimate truth behind the infamous 512-acre anomalous property in northeastern Utah. The mysterious area known as the Triangle remains a key focus for the team, while Eric and Travis lead new operations in the adjacent area known as the East Field, a location where they have previously captured footage of UAPs and discovered ancient Native American petroglyphs and rock formations depicting interdimensional portals. Additionally, this season follows the team as they conduct new advanced technology, drilling, and digging operations that leave them stunned with new discoveries. As they employ their most invasive operation to date, it is revealed that what the team could be dealing with is not only something that is not of this world, but that may also be related to other phenomena that they have encountered across the property thus far. Well, I've enjoyed the first four <laughs> seasons so far. So so far, <laughs> so far. So um, so yeah, I'm so definitely far, here yeah. for season five, and it's right around the corner in like you know a couple of weeks. So yeah, that I can't ought to wait. Be, that ought to be good. I can't wait either. I'm super excited. I'm super stoked. You know, I've always liked watching Skinwalker Ranch. You know, and uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Brandon Fugel, uh, Dr. Travis Taylor. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Eric Bard, and all the rest of the guys. You know, um, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely can't wait to watch this. Same. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just I just had a memory unlock from when we first met online before we even met in person. And, oh, and you streamed that episode yeah. of Skinwalker Ranch. And yeah. that was like the first thing we did together. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, yeah, that was <laughs> memories. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Anyway. Um, Sorry. <laughs> no, okay, it's fine. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, I'm. I can't wait for it to come out. I'm definitely going to be watching it, and I hope you guys will be too. Same. And that concludes this week's UAP Society's UAP UFO News Show. Thanks so much for hanging with us, and while you're at it, do us a favor and smash the like button. Click subscribe, ring that bell notification, leave us a lovely comment down below, and share this video with your family and friends to help us spread the good word. Let's, Let's raise, raise the, the collective, collective consciousness, consciousness together, together in unity. unity. All right, good job, baby. Much, much love, love, peace, and, and namaste. namaste.